Hey guys, Pogo here, and welcome to the next episode of the Bungie Cord mini series. In the first episode, I showed you guys how to set up a Bungie Cord server, and in this episode, I'm going to show you how to write a bucket plugin uh, that will interface with Bungie Cord by using the plugin messaging system. Uh, this one's a little bit technical, it's not just a simple API like you might think, so um, stick with me throughout this, uh, it could get a little bit confusing. Um, in the next episode, I'm going to show you guys how to write a Bungie Cord plugin, uh, because Bungie Cord supports its own plugins that work differently, uh, but in this episode, I'm going to show you how to write a bucket plugin. So if you have um, an existing bucket plugin and you want to add Bungie abilities to it, uh, like you know sending people to a different server once they lose a minigame, for example, this is um, exactly how you would do it. Before we begin, there are a few little mistakes that I want to correct that I made in the last video. Uh, here are my three servers, and I just want to go into server servers A and B. First of all, I've gotten uh, a couple comments requesting that I or suggesting that I switch to Spigot, which I have decided to do uh, because Spigot and Bungie Cord are both designed or created by the same team of people and Spigot has expressed support for Bungie Cord, uh, as I'll show you in just a second. So I've gone ahead and replaced um, the craft bucket jar with the spigot jar, and I've changed the start server command so that it uses spigot.jar instead of craft bucket.jar, which is important. Uh, if you go ahead and run it, you don't have to delete all of your files, it'll work fine, uh, and then it'll generate this new spigot file. And the one thing that we need to change in here um, is you'll see bungee cord, you want to make sure by default that's false, you want to make that true. Because uh, we're basically saying this is a bungee cord server, uh, so we want to make it be true. Uh, and the same thing on server B, I've replaced spigot and start server, and then in the spigot configuration, I have set bungee cord to be true. Now over on the bungee cord server, there are a few mistakes that I've made. Let's go ahead and open up the config, and I just want to show you a couple of um, cool little things. Um, in the last video, I told you that you had to have a server named Lobby, which is actually not true. If you see right here, there's an option called Default Server. It's Lobby by default, uh, but since I have servers which are named A and B, I've set the default server to be A, so I can now call the server A instead of Lobby. You also want to change the fallback server. That means that if there's a problem and the players need to be kicked from one server, they'll fall back and be sent to server A. If that's still lobby like it is by default, there's no lobby server, so that won't work. So you want to make sure you change both of those. And now I can call the server A instead of the lobby. Uh, one other important thing, this IP forward, which is false, you need to make that true. If you're using Bungie Cord, if you have Bungie Cord turned on on the Spigot servers, you need to make sure that you're using IP forward, or else um, it will not work with the Bungie Cord setting that comes with Spigot. So that's all for the little mistakes that I made in the uh, last video when we were setting up, so now we can actually begin. Um, on the Spigot um, website, there's actually a really nice page that explains exactly how to do what I'm going to show you in this video, and it takes away part of my job. Uh, in this video. Now it is a little bit confusing so I'm going to go through and hopefully explain it a little bit better than this page uh, but it's a great page and if you're working on a plugin you need to have it open because it tells you um, all the different commands that you can use and we're going to go over uh, glance at them in a second and then we're going to actually use one of them in our plugin. The plugin that we're going to do is going to uh, get you the player count on an individual server or all servers at the same time. Uh, it is pretty basic, and I think that Bungie Cord might already have support for it, uh, but this is just, I just want to demonstrate this, and also that does um, give output, which not all of the commands do, so I can demonstrate how to send information and how to receive information back, uh, which is also very important. So if you take a look at this, it's first going to explain a little bit about um, uh, plugin message channels. Uh, these basically allow you to exchange information uh, with other mods, actually like single player mods and other plugins, um, which is pretty cool. So first thing we need to do is we need to tell Bucket that we're going to be using these channels. So we're going to go ahead and say bucket.getserver.getmessenger which will give me the plugin messenger. 
and then we're going to say dot register. We'll do the incoming first. It first takes in a plugin, then the channel name. For bungee cord, it's going to be bungee cord. Then a plugin message listener, which is going to be this. And next, sorry, we also want to register the outgoing because um, we want to be able to send and receive information, and that one only needs a plugin and a uh, channel. Now, for this one, it's going to require a uh, plugin message listener. So we're going to implement plugin message listener, and then that's going to ask us to add one more method, and that's going to be a method called on plugin message receive. Um, takes in string channel player player and then byte array message. So uh, when we receive information from the incoming plugin channel, this is where we can actually parse and handle the information that we get. So in this case, we're going to send out a request to get the number of players uh, on a particular server. Then it's going to return the actual information, which we'll handle in the plugin message received. Um, so now what we'll go ahead and do is actually write the command piece. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is, um, well, first of all, let's take a look in here. And you can see all of the different subchannels, or really just commands. These are all of the commands that you can use. Um, uh, we're going to be using the, I think it's called player count right here, we're going to be using that one. Uh, but there are a bunch of different commands, and they all work in slightly different ways. Um, so let's just go ahead and get started, and then there are a couple more things that I will explain. So the player count, as you can see, it gives the information, um, first of all, the arguments, which is the uh, name of the server, or all, if I want to get the global player count. So the first thing that you would do is write out the command, and then you would write out the argument, which in this case is the server, and I'll show you how to do that one second. Then when you want to read it, it first gives you the server, and then it gives you the player count. So let's go ahead and do that in one second. Um, yeah, alright. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to have our string called server. We're going to say that by default it's going to be all, which will be for all of the servers. Um, but if they specify a server, so if it's greater than zero, then server is equal to args zero. So if they do decide, sorry, args.lint, if they do decide to specify a server, um, then we'll use it. Otherwise, we'll just use all. So now what we need to do is actually send out a message. And you'll see that this is how they recommend you do it. And I know that it looks a little bit confusing, but um, let me just copy and paste it, and then I'll explain this to you. The way that these um, channels work are all of the data is sent in byte arrays, just an array of bytes, which if I'm not mistaken is a value that goes from negative 128 to 127, I'm pretty sure. Um, so when we go ahead and write out the information, a byte array is going to be sent out, and then here we're going to receive a byte array. So rather than, you know, define a byte array, we're going to make it nice and easy for ourselves and just use regular strings and write them to a byte array. However, it requires a little bit of um, extra work. So the first thing that we're going to do is we have this byte array output stream, and all this really does is it's an output stream for that contains a byte array. Um, that's not too important. That's a different concept that I would teach in Java uh, Java 101. Uh, but basically, this contains an array of bytes, or we can get an array of bytes out of it. Then we have this data output stream, which can write information to this byte array output stream. So when we go ahead and write this information, it's going to write it into the byte array that we want to use. Then when we go to send it, we're going to actually use the byte array. So if we go ahead and grab this, then we're going to actually call b dot to byte array uh, because we're getting we want to send off the byte array. So that part's not important. Don't worry about it. Um, right here, the subchannel or the command that we want to use is called player uh, not player list player count. So go ahead and type in player count, and then the argument. In this case, the argument that it wants is the server name. So in this case, uh, it's going to be server, which will be either all or whatever is specified. Then when we want to send it, this is one important part. There are certain commands where it matters who's sending them and certain ones where it doesn't. For example, connect, which will connect the player to a server. 
um, you need to have the player send the message. So you would have p dot send plugin message because it matters who the player is that's sending it because you're connecting that player who sent it to the server. With something like connect other, where you specify the name of the player, it doesn't matter who actually um, sends the message since it's applied to this argument. Um, so we'll go ahead. So in this case, as you can see, the player count obviously doesn't matter who's sending it because um, the because it all it does is return the count of players on a server. It doesn't actually do anything to a particular player. So in this case, we can actually just say bucket dot get server dot send plugin management send plugin message, and then bu bucket will send it out for us, and then we're good there. Um, so now we need to actually surround this in a try and catch, uh, just because there is a chance that in some cases, um, using a byte array output stream and a and an data output stream could go wrong. In this case, it won't, but uh, we have to do it anyway. So don't worry about that. That's all for the command part. This is basically um, taking in. We're going to figure out which server we want to use. Then we send this plugin message um, using the correct syntax. We send it on the bungee cord channel. So now we're going to write this part which is where we receive a plugin message and we're going to do a couple of checks and then eventually we should be able to get the message that we actually want. So first we're going to go ahead and say if not channel dot equals bungee cord return. So if you're listening on mo more than one channel, if you're registered more than one incoming plugin channel, you want to make sure that you're using the right channel. And since we only care about bungee cord, we want to make sure that we're on the bungee cord channel. We're going to have to surround this next part in a, um, sorry, we're going to have to surround this next part in a try and catch, um, because just like the stuff that at the bottom that could go wrong, but won't, it's the same deal here. So the first thing that we want to do, if you go ahead and take a look on here, as far as reading, is we need to go ahead and define this data input stream. So just like we used a byte array output stream to output the information, you, we're using a byte array input stream to read in the information. And just like we used a um, data output stream to write out the the strings to this byte array in the byte array output stream, we're using a data input stream to easily read in the data from that byte array inside of the byte array output stream. This part's not terribly important. You don't really have to worry about it. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and define that. The first thing that's sent is um, going to be the command. So string command is equal to in.read utf. So as you can see that it says here, um, the first thing that it's going to do is send back the command. So we use the command player count. So we're going to say if command dot equals player count. We want to make sure that we're using the right command because each command might return different information. So we want to make sure that we're getting the right information. At this point we now know that we're on the bungee cord channel and we know that we've received um, a player count command. So we can go ahead and get the information right <clears throat> here. So the first thing that it does is it'll return the name of the server so if I said A, then string server would be equal to A. It's whatever server I requested. Then the player count, uh, we're going to read in that int. So first we read in the server name, then we read in the player count from the information. And then in this case, we actually can't use this player called player. Since we had bucket send the message, there's no player. So we'll just go ahead and do system.out.println, and we'll say server, server, has player count players. So server A has one player, or I'll put it in parentheses. And that should be all we need to do. We have our command, which will then request the information. Then we have this method, which will listen in for the information uh, that we receive back, and then it will handle it. So it is a bit strange in how it works, uh, but that's how it does work. I've gone ahead and exported this to server A, so if we go ahead and take a look in the plugins folder, you'll see that bungee count is there. Let's go ahead and start up these servers and give this a test. So we're going to first start up server A, which I will put right in the center. Um, then we will start up server B. Let's just wait for that. Okay. 
Now we'll start up server B, which I will put to the right. And then we're going to go ahead and, of course, set up, start up the Bungie server. Okay. Which I'll put down there. All right. So let's go ahead and actually try this. Uh, this is server A, which has the plugin. So if I go ahead and call uh, Bungie count, um, it will do it for um, server for all servers. And we did not get a message back. So let me make sure that I did everything right. Hang on one second. All right, so I've discovered something really strange. Uh, I went ahead and opened up Minecraft. I'll go ahead and disconnect from the server. And if I try to run Bungie Count right now, you'll see that um, nothing is happening, no matter what. If I do the default, if I do it with server A and server B. Um, if I go ahead and join the server, so I'm now on server A, I can now run Bungie Count, which works, so A is 1, and then it even works for B, which is empty. Um, let's just go over to server uh, B, so now we're on the other server, and if I run Bungie Count, it doesn't work. So it looks like it requires at least one person online in order to actually work. So um, I can't really say much about, I can't really help you there, uh, but basically it requires um, at least one person to be on the bucket server or the spigot server in order to run it. As you saw, when I was not on the server, nothing was working. When I was on the server, it was. I'm guessing that's probably because even though I'm sending the plugin message through the server, it's just using the first player online, and if there are no players, it just doesn't work. So that's strange behavior, uh, but there's really nothing I can do. So in order to use these commands, you need to have at least one person on your server. It can't be just the console by themselves, um, but otherwise, if I'm on this server and I do uh, bungee count then you'll see it does print out everything correctly. So that's all for this video. Fixed a couple of issues with the bungee cord setup, and then, of course, wrote a bucket plugin that allows you to interface with bungee cord. Don't forget, you need to have at least one person on the server with the plugin in order to run um, any of the commands, or in order to use any of the commands with bungee cord. Um, I, there's nothing I can do about that. If anyone has any ideas, just let me know in the comments. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment what you want to learn. If you like this video, click the like button. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to write a bungee cord plugin that runs on the on bungee cord and not on bucket, so it's for bungee. Um, and then after that, that'll probably be the end of the series, uh, unless you guys want to see something else. I did make a sign teleporting plugin that actually refreshes with live uh, information, so it can ping the server and then get the player count from the server displayed on a sign and then right clicking on the sign uses it with bungee cord so if that gets any interest I'll make a video showing you how to apply bungee cord um, to that kind of thing uh, as always subscribe if you want to see more I already said this okay it's getting a bit late see you guys soon bye